Hi everyone, welcome to Asta's Place. Today I want to introduce you to one of the most amazing paints I have found in years and years and years. It's Porter's Paint and it's called Liquid Tin. It is the best thing I have ever found. It is really, when you get it, it's, when you feel it, it's like really, really heavy because it's actually got tin particles in here. So you can paint all sorts of surfaces with it and I'm just going to get rid of that because that was in my road just right then. I forgot to take it away. Okay so what I'm going to show, this is what we're going to do today using it. There's lots of things that you get surfaces but and you can, I mustn't forget you can use it inside and outside. Right this is what we're going to do today and when I was a child my grandmother had a ceiling that was like pressed tin. It was fantastic. I used to look at it and think how did they do all that. So to achieve that what I've done is this is just one of those uh, the sort of like the heavy recycled paper mache bust and what I've used here to get this lovely what I sort of am looking at to be I'm trying to create that press tin effect that there was just a lovely lace collar now once you put the paint on um, a couple of coats on and then you give it a shine up you get that's how you achieve that lovely tin lustery color right I'll show you how easy this is you will love it right to start with you need to get your bust shape which I've already undercoated I like to undercoat Code everything that I'm using and then that once that's done the next thing is to, is to get your doily or whatever you want to use so get that oh, a bit rough there so, oops. and I just glued mine on with a little bit of Mod Podge get rid of that there we don't want that on there and then I'll just get a little bit of that there and then just glue quite a good application of that onto there and you can use whatever size one that you wanted to use. And oh, what a stupid girl, Esther. I've done it the wrong way. Never mind. That will just help the whole process. Right, get rid of, put that onto there. And then just determine where you want to put that. I think I might just put that there. And then let that thoroughly dry. And then also put a nice coat of the Mod Podge over the top of that just to seal it. Once that is completely dry, you then need to undercoat it. Right, from there, the next process is to, um, I've put one coat of undercoat on. The next thing I like to do is to, retint just get another coat of undercoat and instead of leaving it just the white color I like to put a little bit of tint into this to just tint it up to that gray color so that you don't have to use too many coats of paint because what I discovered was when I just went over the white um, putting the gray over it the the white kept showing through so I just decided that the best way forward would be to just tint this up. I just put a little bit more into there and that's just a plain everyday black that I've used or a black tint that you can buy from your paint merchant. Right, give that a really good thorough mix like so and then that just gets layered over there. Now you're going to let that dry and it goes quick. So there's your undercoat there right, so you let that dry and then once that's dried we go on to the next process which is applying the tin paint. So I will be back in a few seconds with everything cleared and we'll get into it. Right, undercoated, dry and ready to apply the tin paint. Little word of warning because I've already said that this has got an immense amount of tin particles in it. You need to give it a really, really good shake to make sure that those particles are all evenly mixed through. Then, after opening it, what I do now is just get right to the bottom of that tin and give it another good stir. And stir it if you haven't, if it hasn't been opened before, give it a stir for a good, you know, three to four minutes to make sure that those particles have all been evenly dispersed. The other good idea is to keep your paddle in there so that when you are applying your paint, you continue to do it. Now, the other great thing about this is that the surface has is the same color. And I'll just show you, where do I put that? Where is it? Ah, right here was my tinted undercoat, just to show you. So this sort of needs a good stir again, but you can see that they're both the same color, makes life so much easier. Right, with a nice big fat brush, keep that paddle in there, whoop. And then that just gets put 
all over there and you don't have to be neat about your application. So it's quite good, see how easy, it, it's much, much better having the tinted base and then putting this over the top because it really, it helps to cover it. Now you need about two to three coats. I prefer to use three coats because it gives me a really good cover. And if it's going to be, you want it to be really, really shiny, the more coats of paint you have, the better it's going to be. Right, we'll put that to one side and I'll get rid of that and then once it's dried so you need to what I did with mine was I let it dry about oh pretty much overnight a good 24 hours between applications right once that is done get rid of all of this this is the bit that I really really love and this is the one that I've done over here and I'm really loving this here with this big raised doily onto there I sort of think it gives a really lovely texture right the next thing to do is to get a piece of si fine sandpaper or you can use steel wool and it's just a matter of getting into there and just giving that a really love bu nice buff up and you'll see that that tin starts to, sheen starts to come through just keep going and oh can you see that what it's doing it's fantastic stuff and who would have thought that a bit of you know recycled card could all of a sudden become a nice piece of tin right I'll just blow this up <laughs> So look, can you see that luster there? Fantastic. So you just keep going until you get the desired effect that you want. So you could, I like to use a fine sandpaper. You might like to use something a little bit um, coarser, but I find that this is all that you need to achieve that look. I've got, as I said, I've got lots and lots of things that I want to show you to, with this, at, with using this tin paint, but that will do for now. So you just keep going until that whole surface, and you can, it's just got the most, it goes from this really dull effect to this really lovely shiny effect and then when it comes to doing the bit in here where I've done this raised bit just be very careful make sure that you've put a good sealing coat on it with your Mod Podge and then when you're rubbing it uh, putting your paint on make sure that you get your paint right in to those little nooks and crannies and little crevices then you just keep going until you achieve the look that you want. I really like this. There's lots of things I can do with this. But anyway, moving back to the beginning, there's the one that I did, and there's just a few areas that just need that buff up. So the more you do it, the shinier your, your surface is going to be. Absolutely fantastic product. Ther thoroughly recommend it, and I know that you would have lots of things that you'll be able to do with this application and this technique. I really enjoyed sharing this with you. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've got lots of projects, and you'll rush into them. See you another day.